Hey, 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 everybody. How are you all? Hope you're doing good today. We are back and we are going to be doing the Astro Oracle reading. Now, for those of you who are going like, what is that? I don't understand it. So what I do is, um, and actually when I started doing it, I did it for fun a few years ago. And then I realized, wow, this is really accurate. So, so I just started doing it for everybody. And that's why we do both the general collective reading, which we've done already. And now this is the Astro Oracle reading where I'm going to pull a card for the theme of the month for each of the Oracle, sorry, each of the Zodiac signs. Now, the important thing is, is that you're going to get three cards, which is all three of them are going to tell a story that your sun sign is the first card. The second one is your rising sign. And the third is your moon. So we're taking those three cards. You know, the sun is always the first one. Some people say, oh, the moon is next. And then the rising sign, it really doesn't matter. But those are the three cards that are your personal cards. So for example, if you're an Aries with a Sagittarius rising and a Virgo moon, like my husband is, then you would read those three cards, right? You wouldn't just read Aries. Um, so let's get going without further ado. So let's look at Aries being the first one. We're looking at the month of February in 2024. So, um, Let's talk about this. So you got stars in the car, stars in the sky, which is about limitless possibilities. Um, but I meditate, pray, and download some information first intuitively. It's not just the card that I'm tuned into. So for Aries, also this month, I got, it's a really important month to let go your fear and your limitations that come from your fear. Um, although I have to say most of my Aries people in my life are pretty fearless, but um, regardless, it's like letting go of the, the perceived limitations that you have that working against you in a way, right? And wanting to do everything yourself. Okay, Bizu, say hi to everybody. Say hello. Say hi, Bizu. She, sorry, she's on my lap because she's not feeling good. Um, anyway, back away from the dog. She's, are you an Aries? No. No, that was the, my other one. No, this one is a Leo. She's a Leo. Okay. Um, collaboration is key and crucial in order to, for the Aries personality to get to the stars in the sky, you need collaborators. Um, you can't do this by yourself. And to really remember that what you need are, are people who are supportive of your desire to, to, um, you know, to make things, to, to make things happen for yourself. You want to have people who support your aspirations around you. So this is also in terms of relationships, this is going to be an important month for you to find the collaborators that you need to support your dreams. All right, now let's look at Taurus. So Taurus, um, this month, when I tuned in, it was all really about embracing change. Um, also remembering that not to look at change for the short term, that we're looking at long-term goals. Um, could be some professional changes this month, but it's a really, really interesting time for you also to remember your partnership with spirit. You've got in the hand, which is the universe is your partner. So for example, if you are looking at long-term professional goals this month, um, you've got to you know, again, tune in, not, not with the, I want this. It's more, what is in my highest alignment and really remembering that you have a partnership with spirit first and that your inspiration comes from spirit and you ask to be inspired for the long term, not so much the short term. So make, rather than make reactive, quick movements as Taurus, which is, you know, actually it's not really a Taurian way of doing things, but it just says no sprint. Trust spirit's timetable. I think that's really what this is. It's not so much that you guys are quick and reactive. It's more that it's about the, the choice for something that may pay off in the short term isn't going to be as good as something that pays off in the long term. And, and you'll know that by trusting trusting the your intuition and the signs that you see pointing around to that decision. Then we're looking at Gemini, which is really about being true to yourself this month. You know... Being curious about the insights that you get about your, yourself this month. Um, are you going to celebrate or recalibrate, right? So um, the Gemini we have is, is about reconciling to that more shadowy aspect of yourself. I think this is so key because it did come up again. I mean, I always talk about shadow work because I think it's so important. Um, and, but in this case, it's about reconciling to your imperfections, right? And, but remember that once you know something, you can, 
change it. If you don't know and you didn't know, then how do you know, right? It's like you can't change something you don't know. So this is really about the for Gemini to say, oh, I get it. There's something in me that couldn't that needs to change in order for me to really celebrate my um, my internal truth, which changes as you mature, by the way, you could be bumping up against some of that, uh, some of the resistance to that maturation, the evolution that's requiring you to change. So for Gemini, just really, you know, be super gentle and loving with yourself as well, too. And trust that you are here to be unique. You, you know, you are really here to express. That's what the Gemini does. It's a communication. It's ruled by Mercury. It's a, it's that fabulous, um, chatty Cathy kind of conversation. Oh my gosh. When I think of Gemini's, all my Gemini friends are like that. They're very, very exuberant and talkative. And, you know, look at my friend, Deborah Silverman. She's got this big school, astrology school. Every single one of my Gemini friends have that in them that they communicate and they communicate really well. And they're always learning something and, and educating. And I think that's really important. Also to reconcile that you might not know everything this month, Gemini, and that's okay. So um, be yourself, celebrate that and recalibrate um, when you discover the treasures hidden within you that you might have been resisting. And that's for Gemini. Now let's look at little Cancerians. Moi. <laughs> Jeweled web connectivity. Yay. So I kind of tuned in again. Um, this is a month in February is a month to move beyond fear for cancers um, and lim and limitations but in a different way than uh, Aries. Obviously, it would be different. Cancers are very different, very emotional. And again, we want to hold on to what we know. This is about stepping out of your comfort zone, cancers, this month, and also to address any internal obstacle that prevents connectivity, right? So that's really important that the connectivity piece is the theme for Cancerians for this month also. Again, it's a month of relationality, really important though, to ask yourself, what prevents me from getting close and intimate or even in, in, in even acknowledging that I am part of this extraordinary jeweled web. I can't do this by myself. This is this is definitely a we, a card about celebrating we for Cancerians um, and opening up to a broader spectrum of people. Now for Leo, let's take a look and see. Leo this month, and this is interesting. Collaboration, connection, relationships are all, again, Folk, you're, it just feels very much about the quality of your connections. Who are you really around? You know, they always talk about the five people that you associate mostly are the reflections of you. So like who is in your sphere? You know, are they supposed to be there? Are you making space for people that shouldn't be there now? You know, because sometimes you outgrow people, not because they're bad, because you, you know, they may be going in a different direction and you might be going in a different direction. And that's what life is. So where are you hanging on or still around people that may not be supportive of your movement forward? Um, and th those are the kind of questions you got mindful, which is group think, right? The card, which is about group think for the Leos. So this is to be careful. Are my, are these my thoughts or am I just going along to get along? Like, am I just going along with, with what people are saying? Because, oh, I want to belong to the group. Um, or am I, you know, the other option, the other way of looking at that card is you influence people. You can influence you know, people um, by the things that you say and what you do. So this is also about responsibility for Leos to really be in alignment with what you say you are. Make sure that your your words and your actions are are similar. They are in alignment with each other. Um, and ask yourself, do I really want to be here? Is this person really should should this person be around me right now? And it's okay if it, the answer is no. Um, it's probably for the highest good of both of you. Now for Virgo, lots of motivating feelings for Virgo um, and uh, self-care, heart home, compassion. How do I move my hand? Okay, so compassion is the card. You want to be very clear that, that you're seeing yourself through that lens, Virgos. Um, you know, none of this self-criticism thing that you're so really good at doing. Um, but it really is, you're seeing some new motivation. You really want to like declutter this month, um, but do it with a smile on your face and make sure you don't run out of steam. So it's very important for the month of February that Virgos rest and take care, great care of themselves. Oxygen mask on first, just like they say in the plane and then on the person beside you. So don't over, over give or over, 
overthink or over like getting too detailed, right? So just back out when you know it's time. Now for Libra, and Libra is the sign of relationality, right? So Libra is all about new friendships. And, and this month is all about how to uh, nurture those friendships and nurturing relationships just in general for this month in February. And what's beautiful um, and putting others first, etc., and really getting to know them without it being about you. Um, you have a sacred contract card, the covenant card which is a beautiful card, which is really about, you know, kind of meeting new soulmates. Could be new friends, new friendships that you're, uh, you know, getting closer to, new business connections. It just feels like this is about, for Libra, it's very much, a, you know, creating that sense of the quality of your relationships and what you put into them is what you're going to get out of them this month. So there's a lot of learning how to trust the relationality between you and others. It's beautiful. Now, Scorpio... Um, I got a real sense of Scorpio needing to get out of automatic pilot. Here we go. The lost compass. That also signifies that, which is get, needing to get back to integrity. What happens is, sorry, I'm going to get a little bit of water here. Mm. When you get stuck in a routine, for example, and you're like, this is for Scorpio. Like you kind of go on automatic pilot, you don't think it just kind of is, you know, it kind of just is, right? It's just, oh, this is what it is. And and you want to pattern interrupt in February for Scorpios. Recognize the sacred quality of your relationships. I'm very close to um, somebody who's actually quite popular on Instagram, social media, who's amazing. Her name is Aisha Ophelia. And, and you know, she had just written a, a post that I didn't see about telepathy amongst friends. And I just felt like texting her and she was away. <laughs> and she sent me the blog that she had just posted. And I had just texted her saying, hey, how you doing? And she goes, oh my God, telepathy, right? So it's like, remind that you have, you may not have hundreds of people like this in your life, but you have like these beautiful sacred connections that, oh, I was just thinking about you or whatever. Those are really important friendships to acknowledge and to, um, yeah, and, and, and to foster this month for specifically for Scorpios, getting out of the rut uh, with relationships and with family, et cetera, and to do something a little differently. Dance, dance to a different tune. Sagittarius, big picture. Looking at the big picture for the month of February is the kind of uh, marching orders for the Sagittarius and being adaptable for what you see as well. The woodwives. So Sagittarius is about, you know, in order for you to get a little bit more granular, you know, a little bit more minute in terms of details, et cetera. You want to make sure that the big picture makes sense to you. You see all of it. You don't get caught in the, in the tiny things that you have to do every day. Um, especially when it comes to other people, et cetera, learning about them is about, is how you move into the adaptability piece. It's really great. Um, Capricorn is all about letting go of control. Letting go and control, staying in alignment with your purpose rather than the thing you think you're going to get. And it's a really great month for things that you've always wanted to happen. This is for Capricorns. So the fates, there's a sky writing, the card of sky writing, that this is just written for you. So if you have abundance that just comes from out of nowhere, it's about gratitude and, and recognizing that, you know, you some things that happen in, for the Capricorn uh, yeah, um, sign this month is, is, is stuff that just happens. You didn't control it. You didn't make it happen. You didn't, you, you know what I mean? They were just these synchronicities that show up for you. And so just stay open. As long as you stay in alignment with your purpose, these things start to come just by, by fate. And you're like, wow, but you can't, you can't control the outcome of those things. So just remember, keep that in mind. Um, but it's a really beautiful month for, for Capricorn. And uh, now we have... Aquarius, claiming your space, your uniqueness, be noticed, and fortune's wheel. This is the month for Aquarius, luck and right timing. This is a great month, obviously. It is the month for Aquarians that then changes into Pisces at the end. But wow, this is really about you are in alignment just naturally, organically, you know, recognizing that you're going to start to see a lot of the things that you work for specifically for yourself, not against others or, or, uh, you know, involved in other people's soups, right? This is you, your own individual, um, celebratory sense of, of beauty and, and creativity, for example, 
um, and leadership. This is really great. Um, and it's okay for you to be noticed this month. Uh, again, law, bringing yourself into alignment with things that support others. That's going to be really important. But yay you, fortune's wheel. Very good. And Pisces. Pisces, February is a month of reflection. And really about asking yourself to see how far you've come. You also got the jeweled web connectivity, which uh, Cancer's got in... Um, did they get that? Did we get that today? I think we did. Yes, we did. We got that today. We got that for this reading as well. So um, connectivity is all about recognizing that you don't do life alone, but it's also super important for you to recognize that sometimes you can get really caught in the web of like, have I, have I come? Where am I? Where am I in all of this? So this month it's asking you to look at how far you've come. Look back, who were the people that came into your life? Who came and went? You know, what were the circumstances that brought you together with others um, to actually make your dreams come true or move yourself forward, et cetera? And even if there, your dreams didn't come true, for example, there, that there was opportunities where somebody came to help you, for example, but also how you've changed. I think that's really important to look at as well, too, for Pisces. So remember the three cards. Now, if you're a triple Scorpio, you're only going to read Scorpio. Um, if you're a double Cancer with Pisces, you only read Cancer and Pisces. But if you have, a, and, and again, um, your sun sign, say it's Cancer like mine, I have a Libra rising and Moon and Leo. So I would read those three cards. Those three cards make a reading for me as law. And then when you look at the bigger reading that we did earlier, that's amazing. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed today. Um, as this was the Astro Oracle reading, I'm Colette Baron reed and I'm at my desk with my dog on my lap. And this is kind of how we're going to see me from now on rather than the fancy schmancy studio. <laughs> I like my desk. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> see you guys um, until next time. All right. Bye. Get ready.